Okay, we need to have a serious talk about how AI is going to completely change the filmmaking industry. I, like so many others, are worried that, well, maybe being a filmmaker is kind of on its way out. After all, why even bother getting into it if in a few short years the process will be completely automated? However, I have my thoughts. Quick disclaimer before we get into the video today, this video is a lot more about text-to-video generators and whether tools like it will replace the process of filmmaking as a whole. This has a lot less to do with, well, I guess the more likely scenario, which is that these tools will aid in the creative process and uh, help streamline things that used to be very difficult. But keep that in mind while watching this video. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. So a couple of years ago, Midjourney hit the scene and I had a lot of fun playing with it. If you don't know what Midjourney is, it's a text to image generator where you put in your text prompt, you could type in, give me an image of a panda, and it'll give you just that. Furthermore, you can even specify the style that you want the image to be. You can make it realistic. You can make it look like it was taken with a DSLR. And I was actually really excited about the prospects of using it to automatically generate storyboards for my films. Most of the time I am making shot lists, but very rarely am I illustrating them. I was very hopeful that maybe I could use a tool like Midjourney to generate those illustrations for me and just keep me track on set. After all, if you have a shot list, you basically have a list of prompts that you just need generations for. However, after actually trying to use it for this purpose, it was lacking in many ways. And it goes to my first point that these AI tools lack control. It was very, very difficult to get Midjourney to generate consistent locations and characters. If I were to run every single one of these shots as a prompt through Midjourney and compile these results into a storyboard, you would find that it wouldn't have the exact same character from shot to shot to shot. What gets even more complicated isn't just the characters within the scenes, but the locations as well. Midjourney just didn't have that level of control that a storyboard artist would have, where the storyboard artist knows what every character looks like and will illustrate them in basically the same way. This problem also extends to text to video generators as well. I can imagine that the problem is actually a lot worse. And the reason for that is because there are so many more variables with film. If you're a filmmaker, you're familiar with this concept of continuity errors. Basically in one shot, you see, for example, a bottle of water on a table. And then when we cut back to that shot, the bottle of water is no longer there. I can imagine that if you are creating your images using a, a random algorithm, that these problems are gonna be significantly worse. Now, I could see how in the future you could have parameters that constrain certain elements of the generation to keep them consistent. So maybe like a character parameter, a location parameter, but as things stand, because text to image generators and text to video generators lack this control and they can't really be used within context or within sequences, things like that, they're going to serve a very similar function to stock videos. So what will text to video generators replace? Well, they're gonna replace stock videographers. Stock photography, like these video tools, don't require very specific results. They don't require results with fine control, but something that artificial intelligence and furthermore text to video generators will not replace are documentary filmmakers and event videographers. This is because in both of these fields, you are trying to document life as it actually was while you were there. And that's something that a random algorithm just isn't for. We have to start thinking of these tools as tools and like any tool, there's the right one for the given job. And if you're trying to record reality exactly as it was, using a tool that is fundamentally based in randomness is not the best way to accomplish that. You can imagine using artificial intelligence to generate a wedding film. Good luck trying to get it to generate people that look exactly like the bride and groom. And even if you could get a generation that looks convincingly like them, you have fun trying to get that result to be consistent from shot to shot. Good luck trying to make a venue that looks exactly like the venue as it was on that day using a random algorithm. It's gonna be a lot easier to just hire a filmmaker to come and document the day. So if you wanna get into filmmaking, we've established that you probably shouldn't get into stock videography and you probably should get into event videography or documentary. Okay, so moving on from the control point, let's imagine, for example, that yes, we grant that this is how AI works today. It has its shortcomings, but maybe in the future, it doesn't have those shortcomings. Now, I think this idea is a very sci-fi idea and, you know, I don't like basing my decisions off of 
hypotheticals, but hypothetically, if AI was to get significantly better. Imagine that you could generate consistent assets for a film, for example, consistently generate those locations and those characters and those props. Well, then what? Would AI replace narrative filmmakers? And to that I say, Shit. So let's imagine that all of these things are the case. What do we do? Well, let's compare it to another tool that does exist that functions kind of similarly. ChatGPT. You can generate an entire novel using ChatGPT pretty effortlessly. But does that mean people are going to stop writing books? Does that mean people are going to stop writing in general because there's a tool that can write for you? I don't think so. I wanted to use ChatGPT to write things that I myself didn't feel like writing. So think, for example, like emails. I don't really like writing emails all the time. So I would use ChatGPT to generate an email for me and I would tell it what it needed to say. However, because I am a creative person, I'm way too opinionated about the exact result that I'm getting. And I found, after experimenting with this tool for a very long time, that going back and forth with it to get a very specific result was kind of fruitless. So ChatGPT is great if you don't really care about the outcome that much. So going back to the hypothetical where if the technology gets better and it is possible to remedy all the flaws I discussed earlier, it's still gonna take an absolute lifetime to be very hands-on with the creative process while using these tools to the point where I just think it's gonna be a lot easier and it's just going to be a better use of time to just go on set and just do it on your own. Especially with filmmaking tools being so much cheaper than they ever were before, a lot of roles on set can kind of be condensed in a way that they just weren't 40 years ago. So given this, what will AI replace? I think it's going to replace asset generation. Imagine, for example, the state that fine art photography used to be at up until kind of recently, where if you wanted to add a bunch of elements to a photograph that you took and fundamentally make it something completely new altogether. For example, you wanted to add angel wings to the person that you took photos of. That used to be very difficult. And the main reason it used to be difficult is because you would have to go in and source all of those assets yourself. But now we have tools built right into Photoshop called Generative Fill, and we can just highlight the portion of the frame where we want to add something and we can tell it what to add and it will just add it. You can imagine that having something similar for video would be very cool. Imagine Generative Fill for video, that would be super cool. Let me just jump in here really quick and add that there's this big filmmaking conference going on right now called NAB. And at this conference, Adobe just demonstrated their new Firefly AI for video. If you don't know, Firefly AI is the process behind generative fill, which is has been in Photoshop for like about a year now. It's worth mentioning how these creative tools are being positioned as well. At least with Firefly AI inside of Premiere Pro, once that's finally released, it looks like it's going to be mostly useful for adding objects to a scene, removing objects from a scene, or replacing objects within a scene. So a great use case and one that they demonstrated was being able to replace the shirt that someone was wearing with a different shirt. So you can imagine, for example, if an actor were to show up on set wearing the wrong thing, that you could easily fix that in post, which is absolutely incredible. This isn't something that's gonna replace filmmaking as a whole, because really it's just making certain aspects of the filmmaking process that much easier. And it's actually making things possible that just absolutely weren't previously. With that out of the way, let's get back to the video. So in this way, if you wanted to, for example, film an actor in a studio and then have the AI automatically rotoscope them and put them in a completely different environment, you could totally do that. And that would be very, very cool. Now, the more elements that you start to add, I think it's going to get so complicated that it would just end up being a lot easier to just go out and do that thing. So what is text to video generators going to replace? I think it's going to replace asset generation. And take, for example, the types of things that have been created using runway AI, things like automatically rotoscoping actors. I think these tools are going to be really, really good for adding these types of little flares to your project. And I'm personally really excited about it because I think it's going to allow for cheaper production of really big, think like blockbuster uh, scale movies. It's gonna be easy for you and your friends to just go out and make like a crazy film with spaceships and aliens and monsters and tons of visual effects, things that were unattainable before. I think these tools are going to make that possible 
but it's not going to replace the act of filmmaking itself. My third point about AI for video production is that AI is an inherently unoriginal medium. It's not super good at making things that haven't been made before. It's just good at recycling things that already exist. Now, on an existential level, you could say that that's kind of what we as humans do, but think about how these tools currently exist. Imagine an AI model that's trained only on Renaissance art. It will never give you a result, even if prompted, to make something in the style of Cubism. If it's never seen what Cubism is, it will never invent it. If it's only trained on Renaissance art, it will only ever give you Renaissance art. So even though humans are similarly these iteration machines that are taking things and adding to them, we at the very least can invent Cubism and other genres and styles. And AI cannot do that. So if you want your art to look like everything else, then by all means, use a text to image generator, use a text to video generator. But if you wanna create something that's a little bit unique, that hasn't quite been seen before, maybe elements of it have, but in its totality, it has never been seen before. You just can't do that with an AI tool. And so if you are someone who is very opinionated about how you want the end result of something to be, how you want it to look like, how you want it to make people feel, if that thing hasn't been created before in the exact way that you're trying to create it, then these tools are going to fall short, just by nature of how it works fundamentally. Now, to play devil's advocate, let's imagine for a moment that in the future, artificial intelligence will be able to create original artwork just like human beings. It doesn't just take inputs and output something that's very average, which is what it's currently designed to do. Let's be very clear. What do we do in that case? Let's also imagine that we take this artificial intelligence and we put it in an Android body so it can walk around and we give it a camera and it can even make films in the exact same way that you can. What do we do then? Well, from a career perspective, not much. You can imagine that this Android might be a lot cheaper to rent than it would cost to hire a human being to do the same task. And in that event, I don't think people could compete enough to make filmmaking a viable career anymore. But from a creative perspective, as things stand, there are already other human beings that can do all of the same things that I can do. There are already filmmakers that exist in the world. Many of them can create videos significantly better than I can. So even if an AI could do all the same things that a human being can do, I don't really see why it matters much. I don't make films because I'm the only one capable of making films. I make films because I myself find it fulfilling. I don't see how an android that can accomplish the same thing in the same way would be a threat to my creative impulse. And in the event that such an android were to exist, I would say, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Peace out.